working on Wednesday. And this is now the fourth time I'm doing this. Third time this morning. Last one I finished around midnight last night, and it was on my laptop, and I got all this terrible background noise after it was uploaded. So I'm starting again. This is a tutorial for using Stack Edit and to, with Markdown and to integrate with WordPress and Google Drive. We're praying that it's going to work. Uh, if not, we're just going to stick with that one with the bad recording. Um, so this is uh, Stack Edit, and I recommend you having a few tabs open uh, when you are working in here. I recommend having the, the Markdown cheat sheet that I've uploaded to the uh, that I've linked to from the course website. Uh, your Stack Edit. Uh, your WordPress da dashboard and also the folders that we're using in uh, Google uh, Google Drive. Okay, you'll notice that the uh, menu bar has some familiar things up here. If you want to use these uh, these options, uh, we have a title. So let's say Stack Edit Test Four. Uh, this will allows you to sync your documents. This is, allows you to share them, open a new folder, delete grab full, uh, open the local document, and then this is your uh, menu for a variety of different things. Now the menu sometimes appears over on the left. Uh, for some reason it's over here on the right today. Now when you first come to Stack Edit, it will ask you if you, if you can, if it can have access to some local memory. Please allow it to do that so that it can store a few things on your, on your site. Now you'll see that on the left hand side is where we compose a markdown. Uh, the right hand side is how it will be written uh, as how, how it will be displayed uh, once it is converted into whatever uh, format we're going to be doing. And for our purposes here, it's uh, HTML for today. Now you can do headers, uh, which is always nice to have. Uh, headers are indicated using the pound signs, and you can see that you always have a start and an end. And there are six levels of header, and the more pound signs you add, the smaller will get. Okay. Um, you can write in plain text. And notice that we're not choosing any fonts or anything like here, uh, font faces. If you want to do any changes like that on the blog, you have, I think, the ability to do that in, in the dashboard. Here we're just, we're working with just, uh, just plain uh, text. Here, if we want to add italics, use one asterisk. And if you want to add bold, you would use two asterisks. Okay. Um, you press return two times to get to a new paragraph. If, however, you want to do a carriage return, so the text will appear directly underneath it and not have a new paragraph, what you do is you press the space bar twice, space, space, then return, this is a new, new line. Okay. Uh, quite, quite easy to do, just remembering that space, space. Now we don't really need to have this here, but if we did want to have a block quote, uh, we would use this right caret, and then this is not do have a link to CNN. And if you want to add a link, what you do is you use your square brackets. You put your square brackets around the word or phrase that you want to have uh, clickable, and then in parentheses you would type or paste in the URL. And then it would make that clickable. If you want to <coughs> Right, um, and there are other things that you can learn how to do, like adding lists or a variety of different things uh, from from the cheat sheet. Uh, the one last one is to add an image, which you'll be doing quite a bit in your in your post. And to signal that we're going to have an image, we use a exclamation point, and then you would you're going to use two square brackets and two parentheses. And you'll see that this is kind of a pattern uh, with a lot of stuff in in Markdown here is where we, we put the alt text. And alt text is stuff that appears on the screen uh, if the image can't be found, or if uh, someone's using a screen reader, or has their images turned off. And in the parentheses, we would add the URL to the image. Now to get the URL, 
this will require you to upload your image to the web, to the website. And you do this in the dashboard through uh, under media and then add new and then you select your files. And I've already gone through and done this. So I've uploaded this image for this test and I can click edit and it will give me the file URL. And I copy that, come back over to stack edit. I would paste that here in the parentheses and you can see the image is appearing and I would then write, uh, this is sort of the space war article from our original 1972 printing. Okay, so uh, I, that's how I do my image, and then I can, if I want to, I can add a commentary. Oops. And this can go on and on uh, throughout the page. But let's just say we're, we're finished now. We want to upload this to uh, WordPress. We would click on the menu, go to Publish On. And you see that there's a variety of different options that we have here. We're going to choose WordPress. And let's hope this works this time. Keep getting this, you're offline error. But I am not offline. Markdown, test, tutorial, and so on. Click OK. Great, I'm getting this message here. Now, uh, I've gone through this a couple times, so it didn't ask me to log in, it didn't ask me to choose which blog it is, but uh, it's nice that I've it has actually published this time, so I'm not going to worry about that. Then I can go and just check out Bill's test blog, and I can see that stack edit test 4 is here and the post is published. Now if I want to go back and change anything, if I had some formatting issues, I want to change text colors or font colors, that sort of thing, uh, I would do that in WordPress. But if I ever wanted to go back and change something here, I could go back and change just this. This is a sentence and I can click synchronize. I Oh, and I can go publish on WordPress. Okay. Should be able to refresh this. Oop. See, I have multiple ones of these these tests these tests here. It looks like I published it again. I'm not sure why it did that. It should just I should have just sync that. Well, we'll get to the bottom of that one. Okay. So with uh, to add it to Google Drive, what we do is you would go to export Google Drive. Now this would be a way for you to add a work sample to the learning record if you want to use something that you're doing in here. Uh, export to Google Drive. Now you'll see that there is a folder ID. Um, and this allows you to put this your document in a specific folder. So let's say I want to put it in the in progress work samples folder. I would open that, and then in the in the ur I'm sorry the uh, address bar, after the folder slash, you'll see a long line of numbers and letters, and you can copy this. This is the folder ID, and you would paste this in here, and click OK. And it says now it has been synced. I can click back on it, and there it is. There is the document. And I would then be able to work with that um, however, however I want it. Okay. Um, to import from Google Drive, I'll click Import. And I have it listed here by last modify, but I can do it by title however I want to. And if I want to, for example, get part A, because I might work on that a little bit, I can click it and open it back up, and then I can sync the document uh, when, I'm, when I'm finished. So that's, that's, that's really how you uh, use Stack Edit and you sync with 
uh, WordPress and you sync with uh, Google Drive. If you do have questions or problems, let me know. Uh, please do make sure that you are using this Markdown cheat sheet to, to help you with things that you don't know how to do. Um, as you get to, get to use Stack Edit more often uh, and start using Markdown, it will become much more uh, second nature to use it. Okay, and uh, good luck, and I will see you later.